Similar to Tesla in the early days, a lot of people write off Aptera very quickly simply because it's different and they haven't done much research about it. Therefore, they rule it out as, oh, that's crazy, oh, that's ridiculous. And probably the most common thing that gets brought up with Aptera is this must be a death trap. This thing must ignore safety entirely because it looks weird and because it doesn't look like anything else. Therefore, it is somehow bad. And I think the design inherently, because it's so efficiency focused and more aerodynamic, dynamic than most vehicles on the road has the tendency to come across as smaller I think people just look at it and assume it's a really small kind of like a solo EV or a smart car in reality this thing's actually wider than many pickup trucks at least from the outward positioned wheels but when it comes to the main body of the vehicle the size is honestly very very close to that of a Tesla Model 3 and the other issue I think that comes up when people write off something just because oh it must be dangerous it's not safe is because safety is a very gray area area with a lot of vehicles because there's not just some ubiquitous like score like how safe is this car is it 5 out of 10 8 out of 10 9 out of 10 there's all kinds of different collisions and problems that our vehicles can run into and certain vehicles will perform better in some regions of safety and worse in others highlighted very well by Steve from Abtera Owners Club in his video he showcases how rear end collisions are by far the most common not so much two cars being collided head on and one of the far more deadly collisions collisions is when a vehicle is crashing into a solid object. And when cars collide with a tree or a telephone pole or a street light or something, that's when actually having more weight tends to hurt you because you have more velocity, you're using up more energy to move all of this mass into a stopped object, and that's when having a heavier vehicle hurts. But most people tend to just think, oh, I need to have a heavier vehicle because those are safer, and because the Aptera is lightweight, that means it's dangerous. Because what happens if the Aptera collides with a uh, Hummer EV on the road, well, it's gonna get crushed. That's just such a rushed and stupid way to look at safety, in my opinion, because that requires you to basically acknowledge that semi-trucks are always going to kill whatever you have on the road, unless you buy something heavier and stronger than a semi-truck. Essentially, we all need to be driving around Tesla semi-trucks, and then we'll truly achieve peak vehicle safety, right? Because we'll be heavier than everyone else on the road. When two vehicles collide head-on, yes, having that extra weight helps, because you push the lighter vehicle out of the way, so so you take less of the impact and you don't come to a complete stop and start going in the opposite direction. But NHTSA has shown us that is not what most car collisions are and that's not even what kills most people in car crashes. Getting hit from the side and from the back are far more common to lead to some type of injury in the vehicle and despite the Aptera looking quite bizarre and unique compared to other vehicles on the road, it doesn't take away from a lot of the basic safety features. In fact, it may actually enhance a lot of passive safety systems that we're used to in today's vehicles. So for one, don't have that mindset that, well, it's small, so it's dangerous. No, because this Aptera is wider than a Model 3. And if we're just ignoring the wheels for a second, the crumple zone, as in the very tip nose cone of the Aptera all the way to where the occupants are sitting on the inside is actually pretty much exactly the same width of that of a Model 3, which has an incredibly large crumple zone, larger than the required amount. And the Aptera is no different in that way. And honestly, if we're talking about crumple zones from like the rear side of the vehicle like how it collapses on the back end the Aptera has more space honestly than a Model 3 because obviously the Model 3 is a five-seater there's a second row so the amount of space you have for the car to get hit from behind and crumple up and not deploy that impact into the occupants on the inside but instead demolish that throughout the trunk space the Aptera I would argue has more margin from the back than a traditional sedan does considering how long the Aptera is relatively relative to how many people it sits, right? It's just a two-seater, but still got a lot of space to crumple up and absorb that impact when getting rear-ended from behind. And an important benefit, in my view, of these side-mounted wheels is that because the Aptera is relying on in-hub motors, which means there's no axle connecting those two wheels on the side, in the event of a front-end collision, and they've tested this in their simulation data, that's gonna result in there not being wheels or axles that push inward towards the occupants in the cabin. Instead, those stay on the outside, which means there should be a lot less mass to basically push inward in the vehicle. And the Aptera still has front-facing airbags, just like passenger cars are required to have. Because the Aptera is an auto cycle, they technically don't have to care that much about safety. There's very little crash testing they have to do legally, but they've assured us both in interviews and announcements that they are voluntarily testing the Aptera to be just as safe, if not safer, than any other passenger vehicle because they want people to feel 
feel comfortable riding around in it. And even though they don't have to include airbags, they're going to anyway so that they can improve the safety measures of it. The next huge important piece of the equation is the materials that the Aptera is made of. Because it's using a body in carbon design, as in it's a forged carbon material made by CPC Group that is building most of these body panels. If you know anything about carbon fiber is that it is far stronger, far harder to bend than that of steel or aluminum, which is what a lot of passenger cars are made of these days. And that carbon composite is able to redirect impact a lot better than traditional steel is. I think a lot of people just look at cars and assume, well, the outside of it is metal, which means it's really strong. In reality, because of the shape of that metal and how easy it is to bend, it might as well just be tissue paper on the outside. Like for a lot of exterior metal of cars, unless it's like a cyber truck, it's mostly just there to help with aerodynamics. It's really not preventing anything from protruding into the car. And that's why people can literally dent your car just by opening their door into it. Just like the strength of a kid's arm is strong enough to basically dent a lot of what the outside of your traditional vehicles are made of. So there's passive and active safety systems in place to make the car as safe as possible. And having that forged carbon composite surrounding the entire thing, which can crumple when necessary and retain its shape when you want it to, is a crucial part to making the Aptera super duper safe. The other one I've seen the CEO, Chris Anthony, mention in interviews is the chassis shape of the Aptera. It's much closer to that of an airplane. You know, it's a lot more rounded on the edges than a traditional vehicle. And typically cars don't do that because it comes at the cost of interior cabin space. But because Aptera is so wide and so large anyway, and their focus is all about aerodynamics and efficiency, they're comfortable having that rounded exterior. And that helps redistribute the impact in the event of getting hit from the side. Like you're going through an intersection and someone runs a red light and hits you. Basically think of the Aptera a bit more of like punching a beach ball. Like obviously you can move it a lot when you punch it and the Aptera likely will get pushed around around a lot by other heavier vehicles on the road in an impact, but they're not pushing in that impact to the interior of the car, which is where you see the most amount of injuries. People getting hit from the hip because the vehicle basically crumples inward, and I would say most cars getting hit from the side, it's more equivalent to you like punching a cardboard box. It's a lot easier for you to get your fist like all the way through, but if you take that same amount of force and punch something that's more rounded that wants to retain its shape like a beach ball would, it's just gonna bounce around a lot, but it's not going to be pushing all of that inward materials inside the car. So I'm not trying to say it's impossible for you to get injured in an Aptera, and definitely the biggest concern I've seen from the Aptera community is that, you know, they have the front-facing airbags on the inside for a front-end collision or a rear-end collision, but they've made the decision to not include side-mounted airbags, which has some people concerned. And yeah, I'm not trying to make the case that the Aptera will be safer than everything else on the road, because again, it's not that linear of an equation. In certain certain aspects, I think particularly rear end collisions, the Aptera may be safer than a lot of traditional sedans because of how much space there is in the vehicle before you actually get to where the passengers are. And thanks to there not being an axle or wheels to push inward into the cabin in front end collisions, whether you're hitting another car or you're hitting a telephone pole, I think the Aptera may perform way better than other cars do. But in side impacts where it gets pushed around a lot or maybe gets pushed upward and the passengers on the inside are being knocked around a lot, it might take a little bit of a loss in the side impact category, but considering the vast majority of injuries and car crashes are going to be from the rear or the most painful ones are going to be when you're hitting a front end collision, that's where I think Aptera made the right choices and deciding not to have side airbags is probably an efficiency measure or a cost cutting measure and I hope it tests well. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering why don't we have actual crash ratings of the Aptera yet? Well, it's because it's really pointless to do crash ratings on prototypes because the Aptera prototypes that they have right now are not using production ready parts. If they had production ready parts, we'd be in production. So that's why Aptera's focus right now is on getting all the production tooling ready. They provided a huge update in their webinar showcasing how all of these forged carbon composites are going to be stamped out of these giant metal presses. And once they start cranking out those, which they've said should be this summer, then I think it'll be a lot easier to start getting a Delta prototype line ready. And that's when they can start doing some real world crash tests, which they've assured us many times they always intend on doing that from the beginning, but there is still, I think, a lot to be learned and a lot of simulation data that we can gather from. Tesla has used tons of simulation data to improve the passive and active safety systems in their cars, and I don't expect Aptera to be any different. There's all kinds of simulations they've been doing for safety measures, and I think a lot of their simulation data will prove to be right in the real world, especially when the cage inside of the vehicle is basically inspired from 
Formula One racing, which F1 vehicles use a lot of carbon composites so that they can crumble when necessary and redirect the impact during a collision. Those cars go really, really fast and take huge impacts and the drivers are still able to walk away mostly unharmed. So by taking that science and engineering and implementing it into this vehicle, I do not have the belief that it's gonna be inherently dangerous or substantially worse than any other vehicle on the road. Something Chris Anthony mentioned to me after we finished recording the interview was that the NHTSA is kind of inherently biased in favor of large SUVs and large pickup trucks. They don't have to abide by a lot of the same crumple zones and pedestrian safety laws that most sedans do. Big pickup trucks have been known for killing a lot of pedestrians because of how poor the visibility is on these big fronts. And when you have those giant hoods and those giant engines there, and then the truck is in a collision, all of that engine space is basically just pushed inward towards the cabin. And simply because something has an aluminum exterior, people think, oh, it must be safe. While at the same time realizing that you can accidentally dent those things with another car door. Like, please just apply some more critical thinking when it comes to like passenger safety and also pedestrian safety, which probably doesn't get talked about enough. But rest assured, Aptera did put a huge focus on safety in their vehicles and they want to crash test them and get some real world data on them much more than we do. And I can't wait to see how they perform in the crash tests, but my personal prediction is that it is going to end up performing great. It's still a large vehicle. It's made out of really, really strong, durable components, and there's plenty of crumple zones. It's rounded off to help redistribute the impact. And honestly, those outward mounted wheels might help a lot with side impacts. You know, someone hitting you out the front, the motor and the wheel and all that will take a bit more of the impact more so than just pushing that onto the inward passenger. So for sure, I'm no expert and all we can do right now is speculate on how it'll perform, but I think it's completely fair to say that they've done a lot of research and implemented a lot of engineering choices to make it as safe as possible. But are there other safety measures that I missed out on? Feel free to bring them up in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. Thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.